Good evening and welcome again to Health and Healing. This is part nine, review of health news and journals. I'm your presenter, Lou Alfala. Glad you could join us today for another exciting presentation. If this is your first time joining us, I want to encourage you that the information shared here is for information use only. We do say, we do disclose that the information does not constitute medical advice. Please consult your doctor for any health concerns that you may have. The whole goal, the whole purpose of this series is to know how to limit surgeries, to know how to limit the use of medications, and to hopefully limit hospital and unnecessary doctor's visits. And so that's what we are doing here, trying to go over natural remedies, home remedies, alternative or natural type of healing versus what is typically uh, conventional. Now there are things that are needed out there, we're not against hospitals, we're not against doctors. There are some very needful things out there. But my goal in my life, and my goal to share with you, is to how to limit those things. My journey is about a 22 year journey in natural health. I used to work for a natural health practitioner for 10 years and so I like to share all the things that we did with the patients that came into the office and how they got success. And so these are some of the things that we are going to share in this series, in fact, as we wrap up this evening. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and go with this acronym, New Start. Some of you have heard that before, New Start is an acronym that stands for nutrition, exercise, water, sunshine, temperance, air, rest, and trust in God. It's an eight letter acronym, the eight laws of health. And so a lot of this focus has been on nutrition, um, sunshine, air, rest. We have been talking about trusting in God. I wanna share this quotation with you from the book Ministry of Healing. It says here, gospel workers, that is those who are working in the field or, or primarily uh, in, in gospel-centered ministries, should be able to also give instruction in the principles of healthful living. There is sickness everywhere, and most of it might be prevented by attention to the laws of health. They need to be awakened to their responsibility for the human habitation fitted up by their creator as his dwelling place and over which he desires them to be faithful stewards. So while obviously the ultimate goal of churches, I believe, or Christian ministry is to put Jesus first and salvation first, we must never negate the temporal care, the temporary care of those that are here on this earth. This quotation continues on, this, on page 146 and 47. It says, thousands need and would gladly receive instruction concerning the simple methods of treating the sick, methods that are taking the place of the use of poisonous drugs. Every gospel worker should feel that the giving of instruction and the principles of healthful living is a part of his appointed work period, for this work, there is a great need, and the world is open for it. Do you think more people are open to natural healing methods than ever before? You think so, right? All right. How many of you guys know who Arnold Schwarzenegger is? All right, he's the guy that is flexing on the screen today. That's not a shot of me flexing by any means. This is uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger in the documentary Pumping Iron. It came out in the late 70s. And they asked, and they looked at Arnold Schwarzenegger, they asked him a question. They said, Arnold, how did you get so big? How did you get so big? And so Arnold's being interviewed by reporters. And you know how Arnold responded? He said, by drinking milk. No, he didn't. Here's what he said. They said, the reporter asked him, how'd you get so big? Is it by drinking milk? Arnold replied, milk is for babies. Milk is for babies. There's a strong push to let everybody know that we're supposed to be drinking milk. Why is it that we're the only species that milk is being pushed upon to be drinking after we are weaned? Why is that? In other words, Arnold Schwarzenegger is disagreeing with what the reporter asked. Did you get big by drinking milk? In other words, no. Does milk do a body good? Now, not all cultures can handle milk, um, milk from a cow. And so you have to be aware of that. You have to be aware of what is good and what is right for your body. Switching gears a little bit. What do you think about this bumper sticker? It says, when the government runs your health, you'll be as healthy as the government. When the government runs your health, you'll be as healthy as the government. My goal here is to hopefully hold us accountable to help us understand that we are accountable to our health. No one else is going to look after for you. No one. Nobody as well as you will look after your health. You know what's bothering you. You know what's irritating you. 
Notice what it says here. This is back in 2016. Or I'm sorry, 2013. This is a forecast of what insurance will cost. IRS says the cheapest Obamacare plan will be $20,000 per family. How many of you guys know what you pay per year for your family in insurance, health insurance? How many of you guys know what you pay per year? Nobody knows? Do you want to share, Lisa? Be brave. 15000 okay. For us, well, we just cut out of our insurance plan, but uh, because of where I work, it was anywhere from two to $3,000 per month. So times 12 is twenty to $30,000. 20, so $24,000 to $36,000 a year for our family. We cut ties with that insurance, talk to my wife. We just have a very basic thing that we pay $45 for, and it's not going to cover anything. We are, what we're trying to do is go to this acronym here and trust in God. Now, some people may look at that as presumption, saying, hey, you need to have insurance. You need to have these and this and that. We're going to take our chances. We're going to take our chances. Is that okay, babe? I already made the decision anyway. Well, we did anyway. $20,000 per family in 2016. Under Obamacare, Americans will be required to buy health insurance or pay a penalty to the IRS. Now, that has been discontinued, that penalty, for the last couple of years. I don't know if you guys are aware of that. Last couple of years, you're not going to be penalized if you don't have health insurance. Here's the irony of this whole health insurance plan, the government health care plan. IRS agents beg out of Obamacare. This is when it was first popular some years ago, uh, just under 10 years ago. Um, the National Treasury Employees Union, which represents employees of the IRS and several other federal agencies, is asking its members to sign letters to Congress objecting to H.R. 1780, a new bill that's proposed, which will compel federal employees, including the president, Congress and IRS, to participate, I'm sorry, to participate in the health plans and insurance exchanges created by the Patient, I'm sorry, the patient Protection and Affordable Care Act. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to pass an act saying that government employees should participate in the government health care. And so this National Treasury Employees Union is saying, look, we're going to protest against this bill. In other words, they're going to make you, the average citizen, get on this insurance plan, this government insurance plan, but they want to be absolved from this insurance plan. So if it's so good, why don't they sign up for it? If the insurance plan is so good, why don't they sign up for it? Makes you wonder. Here's a quotation from Dr. Ron Paul. He says, no single person, including the President of the United States, should ever be given the power to make a medical decision for potentially millions of Americans. Freedom over one's physical person is the most basic freedom of all. And people in a free society should be sovereign over their own bodies. When we give government the power to make medical decisions for us, we, in essence, accept that the state owns our bodies. In other words... If the state or the government gives you a right, it means they have the right to take it back, no matter what it is. Is that okay, Paul? Is that, you agree with that? Pretty interesting, huh? This is something very, uh, not so far recent, but 2012. The FDA approves a new type of flu shot. I'm going to have a lot of quotations. Keep in mind, this series is talking about medical journals and the news. The FDA has approved a new flu vaccine for adults that is not egg-based, although it hasn't been tested on people with egg allergies. Notice this. The manufacturing process for the vaccine called Flusilvax is similar to the egg-based production method, but the virus strains included in the new vaccine are grown in animal cells of mammalian origin instead of eggs. Should we be having weird viruses in our bodies from animals? I didn't say that, they said it. Here is something that's quite recent. This is something I learned just a few days ago. FEMA is to help pay for funeral costs for COVID-19 related deaths. How many of you guys know that that was the case? That FEMA is paying for COVID related deaths? In early April, FEMA will begin providing financial assistance for funeral expenses incurred after January 20th, 2020, for deaths related to COVID-19. It's to help ease some of the financial stress and burdens caused by the pandemic. The policy was finalized today, 
and FEMA is now moving rapidly to implement this funeral assistance program nationwide. This past week, I met with a funeral director because of a memorial service. It's the guy that did it this past week. And I said, so what do you, I asked him a question, so what are you seeing these days? And I talked to him for about 20 days, or sorry, for about 20 minutes. And he said, well, you know that FEMA is paying a lot of these funeral costs of people that are COVID-related deaths. I go, so how do they qualify? He goes, well, the doctor has to sign off on the death certificate, and all they have to put on there is COVID-related. He said, so if they got COVID a year ago or two years ago, that suffices. That's okay to do. So they write on their COVID related, and the FEMA will eventually send the, the family a check for $9,000. So what does that do to the rates or the news of COVID related deaths? It'll increase it, won't it? That's exactly what's happening. And so I began to talk to him. And I said, so what are you guys seeing there as far as deaths? He said, we're seeing a lot of younger people die of suicide. Fentanyl related deaths. Laced fentanyl going into the bloodstream of younger people. Suicide is up 25 to 35 percent in the U.S. That's what he said according to the funeral director. 25 to 35 percent. Suicide is up. Why are we not hearing about that pandemic? Why are we not hearing about that pandemic? Why not? Some of this information is going to be borrowed from the lectures uh, from diverse health services, this is where I used to work. We're going to start off with a patient case here. This is a 15-year-old male. He came in, and he had left side chest pains, and he had shortness of breath when he runs. Also, he gets cold and red hands. He had two EKGs, that's the heart test. One was abnormal, and he gets no relief with an inhaler. He's had this for about a month. His stress test was negative. And from what I can tell, this thyroid is fairly normal. We asked him several questions. It wasn't his heart, but he did have braces. Now, when you're getting dental work done, many times it creates infections in the body. What was happening was he had pains in his chest because his lymph nodes here was all swollen because he had an infection from his braces. And so we could tell that he wasn't doing well. We put him on something to fight this infection, that thymex, to increase the thymus gland to fight the infection, the cardioplast to support his heart, and something to support his thyroid. He comes in about three weeks later, and his chest pains are 90% better. So keep in mind, not everything that is, if you're going to say chest-related or you think it's heart-related, is always heart-related. For this young man, his braces gave him the infection that gave him swollen lymph glands in his left side of his chest. Here's a quick surgery protocol. If you're going in for surgery, um, we would recommend 10 Thymex a week before surgery and a week after surgery to ward off any possible infections so that someone that goes and gets surgery does not hopefully end up with septicemia, sepsis, if you will. So 10 Thymex for immune support. I took that when I had to have surgery uh, on my chin, 10 before and 10 after. And the 10 Cataplex ACP is tissue repair. So you would take 10 before surgery and 10 after surgery. That will help heal the repairs. All the people, all the patients that would come to our office that would get on the surgery protocol, the, the physicians would always say this. It's amazing how quickly you heal. What, you know, what were you doing? And so they would explain what they did. So if you're in going for surgery, this is what I would recommend. This is something that I would do. Uh, again, from the Journal of Virology, annual influenza vaccination hampers the development of virus-specific T-cell responses necessary to protect against the infection. So wasn't the, in, the flu shot used to protect immune, immunity? But according to the Journal of Virology, 2011, it hampers the development of T-cells. The very thing it said it was going to do is actually doing the opposite. It's restricting the T-cells. Those are your immune-supporting cells. I didn't say that. Our church didn't say it. The Journal of Virology said it. This is some old news. Maybe some of you have heard this, and we're, we're headed into a direction now. Hospital employees' jobs in jeopardy if they don't get the flu shot. Just like today with the, if you want to say the, the COVID vaccine, however you feel about it, people are being threatened with their jobs if they don't get the shot. This is not anything new, this is something old. 
Switching gears a little bit. Sleeping pills are linked to a 460% increase in sudden death. Are you having a tough time sleep this, sleeping these days? I'm going to recommend not doing this, but you don't have to take my recommendation. This is from March 6, 2012, Natural Health News. If you take the pharmaceutical sleeping pills to help alleviate insomnia, you are very likely putting yourself at risk of developing cancer or even dying sooner. A study published in the British Medical Journal suggests that patients who take benzodiazepines and non-benzodiazepines, barbiturates and sedative antihistamines for insomnia are 4.6 times more likely to die on average within two and a half years than those who do not take the drugs. The overall risk was much as 530% higher than the death rate for non-users. There's other stuff out there that, how many guys drink uh, tea calming herbal tea? Valerian complex, chamomile, right? Yeah, stick to those things. There's something called, by biotics, called phenotropic. It contains beta phenyl gamma aminobutyric acid. Another word, GABA, which is a derivative of GABA, naturally occurring inhibitor transmitter. Phenotropic has been shown to have a calming effect and may assist in instances of stress, anxiety, and even the improvement of impaired sleep. Sometimes magnesium will slow you down. You can take, you guys have heard of milk of magnesia to slow you down? Magnesium slows you down. There's other things you can take that I've talked about in previous lectures to stop the mind from operating so quickly. Or, or, from, from not shutting off. If you have that busy mind, which I get often, uh, I guess my first suggestion is use the busy mind to go pray. Right? Might as well go pray. If you're up, that's kind of what I do. Another supplement that you can take, valerian, anti-anxiety action is due to its action on GABA receptors. How many of you guys have heard of valerian? Right? This is something that you can do, or valerian tea, something to relax you. Neuropharmacology, 2008, valerian extracts have been used for centuries to alleviate restlessness and anxiety. It enhances the response at the GABA receptors. The quality of the products you take make all the difference in the world. The quality of the products you take make all the difference in the world. You may go to your favorite convenience store, you may go whatever it may be, you may go to your favorite Mart store and say, man, this is a product that I'm going to take, and then you go and you take it, and you say, well, valerian didn't work for me. And then I would ask the question, well, what kind was it and where did you get it from? And if you say, I got it from Certain Club or Store Mart or Paul Greens, I may say, well, that stuff there is not the best stuff. How about that, right? Do you want to open up Paul Greens? Continuing on, melatonin, B6 and magnesium. Melatonin supports a normal circadian rhythm. That's day and night. That's how we sleep. Circadian rhythm for healthy sleep patterns. It provides support for GI health via its antioxidant effect. B6 and magnesium support protein synthesis, GABA production. You'll hear about that. DOPA to dopamine conversion and structural dynamic functions, including modulation of enzyme activities. Did you understand what I said? Perfect. Just kidding. How many of you guys enjoy diet pop? Please don't raise your hands, right? Why don't you drink Diet Pop, Gary? Okay, so you understand some of the properties there. Yes, aspartame, even, be careful when you're drinking some of the stuff that says zero cal caloric intake. Because a lot of the stuff that says zero sugar, it contains aspartame. It'll say zero sugar, but it, t it contains a substitute. Now here's what the literature says. This is from Environmental Health Perspective, March 2006. Aspartame is a multipotential carcinogenic agent even at doses well below the current acceptable daily intake. The results of the study show that for the first time, aspartame in our experimental conditions causes an increased incidence of malignant tumor-bearing animals with a positive significant trend in males. It means it's even worse the, for the males when you take the aspartame. There's plenty of sweeteners out there that are a lot healthier for you that do not have the glycemic index of white sugar. We've been using monk fruit lately at our house. There's the, um, there's the organic cane sugar. You have your honey. Uh, some of that is higher uh, glycemic. There's stevia for those that like stevia. What are some other sweeteners that you folks like? Say again? Fructose? 
Xylitol, right? Anything else? Honey, right? Say again, maple syrup, right? A good quality maple syrup, not the high fructose corn syrup. Definitely not aspartame, not my thing. I would almost encourage people to do this. <laughs> if you're gonna have pop, get the Mexican Coke or get the Mexican Sprite because that actually has the sugar in it rather than high fructose corn syrup. Uh, it tastes better anyway. You're gonna pay a little bit extra, but what's your health worth anyway, right? Again, going over some journals, going over some news. Chemotherapy drugs are linked to severe vitamin D deficiency. Vitamin D is critically important for, the, for cancer patients in surviving their disease longer. But many times what you hear from physicians, unfortunately, is when they, you have a cancer diagnosis, they would say, well, now you need to stay out of the sun. Now you need to stay out of the sun. Now you need to stay out of the sun. That's against the eight laws of health. Eight laws of health. The sun is good for you. The sun is therapeutic. God didn't put it up there to kill us. New study finds that genetically modified corn and Roundup cause, causes cancer in rats. Look at that tumor on that rat there. So here's what Russia does. Russia suspends import and use of American genetically modified corn after study revealed cancer risk. How come we're not as smart as the Russians? Is that a fair question, Tina? No? Right? They do, and they're still making better decisions than us. Right? How can they drink all the vodka and still make better decisions than us? Russia has suspended the import use of American genetically modified corn because it's linked to breast cancer and organ damage. Most of Europe has too. Right? But we don't. We don't. I'm going to share this with this group here. On the way home from Moberly yesterday, from your parents' house, it's a full moon. I look up. It's a full moon. I'm thinking, for those that like conspiracy theories, there's a big ring, a cloud ring around the moon. It was so suspicious, I took a picture of it. No one would believe me. I have it on my phone. I didn't put it in the slide today. It's very faint. But there's a a f there's a circle around the moon. It's, say again? Change of the weather. But how's it around the moon? It's a halo. Okay. So thank you for correcting me. So it's nothing I should be suspicious about, correct? Okay. I thought it was the oddest thing. I go, this is weird. Because every morning, people keep telling me, I see people, airplanes spraying back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Your mom told me that. She said every morning she gets up, that's what she sees. So I, I, yeah, I told your mom and your dad that they're trying to kill you guys. Nobody else, just you guys. So you're going to be cashing in, Nikki, very soon on your inheritance. Stay tuned. The new face of infertility, under 35 and frustrated. TTC, in case you didn't know what that was, trying to conceive, being labeled, infertile, or discovering a partner's infertility is changing the life plans of many in their late 20s and 30s. Do we, have do we have fertility problems these days? Right? Maybe it's because what we put in our bodies through injections. Maybe it's because maybe because the establishment want us to stop having children. The best time to have a baby is up to age 32, says reproductive endocrinologist Pasquale, director of the Yale Fertility Center in New Haven, Connecticut. After 32, Fertility starts to decline and becomes steeper very quickly up to age 40 when it declines very rapidly. Notice this other article from Toxicology and Health, 2007. Sodium fluoride administered in drinking water of 2, 4, and 6 parts per million concentration for 6 months to male rats adversely affects their fertility and reproductive system. In other words... If you drink the contaminated water, you're going to suffer. You're going to feel it. It's going to happen. I know when I came into this community of faith, I thought it was the weirdest thing that nobody drank tap water. And they said, no, we don't drink any of the tap water. I said, well, why is that? And someone explained it to me. Because of all the things that are in it. Very interesting. Among the other weird things that this community of faith does, they actually have meatless bacon. Very interesting. I had no clue. Until I walked into a church potluck and someone was making veggie bacon. Oh, what's that? 
If you like seafood, the farm seafood you're eating may have been raised on animal feces. More than 85% of the seafood consumed by Americans is imported, with much of it coming from China, Vietnam, and various other Asian countries that have not so consistent track record of food safety. Does this want to make you raise your own food? That's what we're trying to do more and more of these days. I can't trust anything. According to Bloomberg, many seafood farmers in China actually feed their fish feces from pigs, geese, and other cattle, even though the practice is extremely unsafe. Even though the practice is extremely unsafe. I begin to ask this question. If everything is toxic, what on earth are we going to eat? If they keep spraying stuff in the air that eventually gets in the soil, I say, Lord, what are we going to do? He's got to come soon. We are poisoning ourselves to death. We're going to eventually, if we can't reproduce, we will go extinct. How do you test for food sensitivities? There, are, there is blood work, there, is, there are blood tests to reveal food sensitivities. I'm going to explain what this is. A 61-year-old female with arthritis, she has gas and stomach pains. She went and she took a blood test. The first line is a milk, second line corn, peanut, soybean, cane sugar, gluten, egg, whole egg allergy. Most of this stuff came up, the results were abnormal. They're given various classes on the right to let us know how severe it is. Her worst one, her worst allergy here is the very bottom one. She has an egg allergy. Her numbers came greater than 100. Very abnormal, class five. The other ones that were high were cow milk and also gluten. 61 year old female, with these symptoms. So she, patient eliminated gluten, eggs, and dairy from her diet. Eventually her gas has greatly improved, meaning she's having less of it. Let me say it that way. She's having less of it. I'm going to clarify that. Stomach pain has stopped. She has no more food cravings, losing weight, and her arthritis is much better. Just by cutting this out. Now this is not a diet for everybody. You have to see, do the blood test, see what you're high as far as your sensitivities. Some people can handle milk well. Some people can handle gluten and eggs and all these things. It depends also what kind of eggs. There's eggs that are free range that are on, on quality food. We cannot all eat the same. Keep that in mind. We cannot all eat the same. This patient, Kelly, same sensitivities. Class four on eggs, class four on gluten, class three on milk. She eventually eliminated gluten, eggs, and dairy for the past two months. She lost 15 pounds, her energy improved, and no afternoon fatigue. No more food cravings. She was satisfied on less food. Satisfied on less food. You're going to hear this a lot, especially for those that are aging. Bone density, osteoporosis, the dangers of high bone mineral density. The present day definitions of osteopenia and osteoporosis were arbitrarily conceived by the WHO in the early 90s and then projected upon millions of women's bodies seemingly in order to convince them that they had a drug treatable, though symptomless, disease. How many of you know here today, as you age, your bones aren't as strong? Okay. How many, of you, how many blood tests, or I should say, how many scans, radiation scans, do you need to know that your blood, your, your, your uh, bones are getting thinner? Do you, do you need that? In fact, many times what they do, hopefully they don't do this, what I have seen happen is they would take a bone scan of a woman in her 70s and 80s and say, well, you don't have the bone density of a 25-year-old woman. Well, no kidding. I'm not 25. How is that going to happen? Why don't you compare me to the other women my age? And so what happens, they begin to put uh, many times patients on uh, treatable stuff on some of these drugs. How would you increase bone density naturally? There are four products up here that would increase bone density naturally. By the way, you can also do weight-bearing exercises. We, I do a lot of trampolining at the house. My wife works out at the house. Um, there's things that you do with weights. I like to do that. Sitting all day is not good. Standing up is very good for your skeletal system. For bone density, uh, not all of these are vegetarian products. There's BIOS to build the bone, calcium food powder. We did both of those. We did calcium food powder, especially when we were working out. In fact, can I, can I share the story about your foot, babe? Okay, about the foot that hurt that we used, the calcium food powder. Can I, can I share that story? Well, I already did. 
My wife was working out intensely, and then her foot began to hurt. Her foot wasn't out. I, I, I pulled her foot. I adjusted it a little bit. And then she's like, do you think you know, it's a little bit stressed because she's working out? I said, yeah, why don't you take the calcium food powder that we have? So how long did it take you on calcium food powder for the pain to subside after you were on that? After a couple days, the pain started to subside. This is live on air. I'm sorry I did not ask you beforehand to uh, share this story, but the, the fact that was on there. So do you forgive me? You're on air. You're live, babe. Thank you. Thank you so much, right? Yes. All right. Bone density. Bios, calcium food powder, biodent. A lot of times I use that for the teeth. And then osteo B2. Increased bone density, especially as we're aging. Statins. This is from the Canadian Medical Journal. Statins are used to lower cholesterol. Prevastatin therapy was associated with an increased risk of cancer as age increases. Statin drugs increase the risk also for diabetes. If you know someone on diabetes, check what they're on as far as medication. Statin drugs are associated with an increased risk of cancers of the thyroid, esophagus, urinary tract, and lung cancer in women. I didn't say that. The medical journal said it. Prolonged use of statins is associated with a significantly increased risk of colorectal bladder cancer and lung cancer. Statins increase the risk of prostate cancer. So if there are all these risks, why are we getting pushed only in the one direction? Why is it that many times when we see a physician, they only want to do one thing? Why do you suppose that is? Yeah, money. I mean, bottom line is the money. So tell me, do we have a health care industry or do we have a sick care industry in this country? So when they tell you, if we can come to a conclusion that the government wants to fund your health care, do you think, for the most part, large in part, do you think they want to do it to make you well or do you think they want to do that to hamper your health? My mind gets going in a different direction. I've said it this way and I've heard it said before and we would tell patients this way. Don't be cheap with your health. Cash is accountability. If someone else pays for it, you are less likely to hold them accountable. Does that make sense? Here's a conclusion in regards to statins. Furthermore, the cardiovascular benefits of low achieved levels of LDL may in part be offset by an increased risk of cancer. In other words, yeah, you get your LDL lower, but guess what? Your cancer rate will increase. There's other things you can do to lower cholesterol. But not only that, cholesterol is not always the bad guy. We still have people that are getting heart attacks and strokes. Why is it always on cholesterol? More frequent stat statin use is associated with accelerated coronary artery calcification in type 2 diabetes with advanced atherosclerosis. That's from Diabetes Care 2012. Keep in mind that cholesterol is needed. Cholesterol is needed to prevent aggression, to fight cancer. It's good for memory, for testosterone, to prevent hemorrhagic uh, stroke, for longevity, and to help fight infection. I said this before when I talked about this last year. What do they look like in the nursing homes? What do they look like in the nursing homes? Right? Right? How many meds? What are the most popular meds? Statin drugs? Blood pressure meds? If you want to look like that in a nursing home, stay on those medications. I want to have energy, and these are the last days. Why do I talk about this? If we're going to talk about it in, in, in a Christian context, the Bible tells us we are living in the last days. Don't you want to be in the best health possible mentally and physically so that you know what decisions to make, so that if you need to run for the hills, you're able to run for the hills? I want to be able to do that. So I am, I am very aggressive. I don't mind spending the money we spend on our health I, because I care about my health because I know very soon there's going to be a time where all the money in retirement, all the money you have saved will be confiscated. You're not going to be able to use it. So might as well invest in your health. That's my philosophy. It doesn't have to be yours, but it's my philosophy. Doctors in denial over useless PSA prostate cancer test. The PSA test used to measure prostate levels 
They're saying they still offer it to healthy men even though it has been proven to cause more harm than good with its false positive results leading to needless and dangerous treatments. There's other things you can do if your PSA level is elevated. Other stuff you can do. Number one thing, I'll say this, is stay away from drinking out of the plastics. Stay away from drinking out of the plastics. We don't do plastic water bottles at the house. I don't carry one. I don't do one. I don't do any of that stuff. That has all, um, it's carcinogenic. It has a lot of estrogens, BPA, all that stuff that gets into your, into your body. Again, we're just moving through some of these health journals here. This is from the health journal, What Doctors Don't Tell You. Beta blockers don't protect against heart attack or stroke. Beta blockers are used to reduce blood pressure. Beta blocker drugs have been given to heart patients for more than 40 years. But scientists have discovered only this week that they have almost no protective effect. The drugs are routinely given to patients with coronary artery disease, especially if they have suffered a heart attack. But researchers have discovered that patients taking the drugs are just as likely as people not taking the drugs to suffer a second heart attack or stroke. Even patients who have had a heart attack aren't protected, according to researchers from New York University School of Medicine. Beta blockers don't protect against heart attack. Why are they still given? How about this one? What do they do in animals to make animals plump before they go to market and they're butchered? What do they give them many times? Antibiotics. Antibiotics help you gain weight. They hold fat. So antibiotics given to babies increase their risk of obesity. Researchers from the New York University School of Medicine's Department of Pediatrics have determined that children given antibiotics prior to five months of age have significantly higher risk of becoming obese later in life. Babies given antibiotics between the ages of 15 and 23 months of age had significantly greater likelihood of being overweight at age 7. This association between obesity and antibiotics relates directly to how our gut micro, uh, microbiota affect our digestion. Top 10 cereals that contain GMOs. Is your cereal box up here? This is eight of the 10. I'm gonna show you the ones in just a few moments. Top 10 cereals that contain GMOs. I liked O's. I ate Frosted Flakes growing up. Two out of the eight there. And then there's Kix, and then there's Puffins. Never had that one. Top 10 cereals that contain GMOs. The best non-cereal GMO company, according to Natural News, is Nature's Path Organic. How many of you guys have heard that one? Nature's Path Organic, right? And that term organic is even misleading. You guys know that feces is organic? So if you have organic lettuce and there's feces on there, it's still organic lettuce. It doesn't mean, so keep that in mind. A trusted source, find someone that is trusted. All right, FDA approves first GMO flu vaccine containing reprogrammed insect virus. Here are some side effects to this flu block, flu vaccine. Guillain-Barre syndrome. That's like MS symptoms. That's when a virus is attacking the spine. Respiratory infections, headaches. Do you know people that have chronic headaches? Things that don't stop every day, it's a headache? Is it because you're giving them the headache? Hopefully not. Allergic reactions, myalgia, rhinorrhea, that's uh, sinus drainage, continuous sinus drainage, altered immunocompetence. These are side effects here, and they know that there are side effects here. You guys ever watch the commercials that talk about certain drugs? And the, the drug portion of it is probably five seconds long. Hey, this is the name of this drug, and it helps you with this. However, the rest of the commercial for the next 50 seconds is on what? The side effects of that. If you're, you know, getting ready to be pregnant, if you're young, if you, if you work out, you shouldn't be taking this. If you eat this, you shouldn't be taking this. If you, it's like, well, who's it for at the end? Guys, there's other ways to do stuff. If you, you know, you're in charge of your health, you can make your own decisions for yourself. Appalling irresponsibility. Senior scientists attack Chinese researchers for creating new strains of influenza virus in veterinary laboratories. That's May 2013. 
That's nearly nine years ago. This has been happening for decades. This is nothing new. Bio-warfare, bio-warfare, biological warfare is nothing new. They've been doing this for years. The theory is that COVID was produced in a laboratory as a bioweapon, creating new strains, creating new strains. Where have we seen this happen before? Lab-altered H5N1 flu, more infectious to humans than birds. Over a year ago, Japanese researchers created a genetically modified version of the H5N1 avian influenza virus to explore the risk of human-to-human -human transmission. They reported in the Journal of Nature in early 2012 that the mutated pathogen could be transmitted among mammals through the air in aerosol droplets, even from sneezing. Another one. You think that this is just isolated. Human transmission of deadly H7N9 virus is now confirmed. Scientists in the Dutch city of Rotterdam know precisely what it takes for a bird flu to mutate into a potential human pandemic strain because they've created just such a mutant virus or viruses in the laboratory. Right? So who's creating these pestilences that Jesus talks about? There'll be pestilences in the last days. Yes, this earth is waxing cold, waxing old and getting older and cold. Is this naturally occurring? Or is there a diabolical plan on this earth at the hands of scientists creating all these viruses? According to the World Health, the WHO, H7N9 is one of the most lethal influenza strains ever, identified because it mutates eight times faster than a normal flu virus. It was initially believed that the virus could only be transmitted to humans who have direct contact with poultry. After 36 H7N9 deaths and 131 infections officially reported since the virus was first identified, the worst case scenario that may be feared now may be on the horizon. It almost seems like they were practicing for such a long time and then they gave us what we had the last couple of years. That's my theory, you can disagree. How many of you guys have heard of Flintstone vitamins before? Right? We used to take these growing up. You guys want to know what's in them? You really want to know? Many of the vitamins used in the Flintstones are considered hazardous substances in Europe. Cupric oxide, or copper, for instance, oxide, which is listed as a supposedly nutritional source of copper in Flintstone vitamins, is actually classified as a hazardous substance in the EU's Dangerous Substance Directive. And so I looked this up just to make sure, just to see if this was accurate. Here's a substance info card. It says copper oxide. This is exactly what's in the Flintstone. You can't read it. It's quite small. That middle paragraph there, I will go ahead and read it for you. It says, according to the harmonized classification and labeling approved by the European Union, this substance is very toxic to aquatic life and is very toxic to aqu aquatic life with long-lasting effects. Flintstone vitamins, the very things that give the kids, are toxic. How could this be? How could this be? If you're joining us for the very first time, you may think I'm nuts. This has been going on for decades. I says, I'm just the reporter. I'm just the messenger. Don't crucify me if I go out in the parking lot and my tires are slashed. Who can I blame? So what is a protocol for children? We do much of this at the house. There are several things that you can do. Our son takes his supplements, a whole group of supplements, many times during the week. Um, sometimes it's not consistently every day. I make sure he gets something every day. The first multivitamin in the world made in 1929, the premier product brand of Standard Process is Catalan. It's made from food. You can look at the ingredients as actual food. Two tablets daily. The PDCM are the liquid minerals. You can even use the liquid minerals to water your garden with. I did this last year. I used a tablespoon and two gallons of water when my tomatoes were struggling. They were struggling to grow. And in about, the, in about a month after I watered them, they started to produce their tomatoes. So these are liquid minerals. You can place that in juice. And then there's the Bio-D, one drop three times per day. That's vitamin D, especially in the wintertime. And then you have your fats. You need fats for brain development. All this stuff my wife took when she was pregnant with our son. 
She took all this stuff. And you can continue to use this for a children's daily protocol. This is the pregnancy protocol here. This will also help to prepare the mother and the father for a baby. My wife took all of this stuff. We weren't cheap when we were nourishing our son. There's a two vitamin mineral and vitamin um, supplement. There's the liquid minerals that is there. There's a two omega-3 fatty acids, folic acid B12 for spinal development, cruciferous complete, reduces prenatal estrogen exposure. The zinc liver chelate helps prevent stretch marks. You wonder why some of the mothers get stretch marks? It's a zinc deficiency. It's a zinc deficiency. Keep that in mind. The once the Mother is continuing to grow three to six months. You want to add iron as blood continues to develop and grow. And then seven to nine months, you have your camel plus the calcium as the bones continue to form. 13 medicinal properties of coconut oil. How many of you, you use coconut oil on a regular basis? Right? Valerie, what do you like about coconut oil, if I can ask you? She likes the flavor of it. Okay. Okay. okay, all right. You didn't have to share all that. You're making us blush here. But I, I do as well. I use it for my body as well. I use it for my skin. If I'm out going to be tanning, I, I put it on my skin. We put it on our son when he had dry skin. Uh, many times, little babies, when you're you know, wiping that area, you know, the private area, because they're changing and all that, we would take coconut oil and lather him up there. That way, it was nice and you know, baby soft again, right? Instead of all abrasive. 13 medicinal pro properties of coconut oil. Fat burning, it heals wounds, anti-ulcer activity. Take a spoonful a day. This stuff is relatively cheap, right? What do we get it for? The whole 32 ounces for, was it 10 bucks, 12 bucks? Is that how much it is, 10, 12 bucks? E even less, okay, wow, very good. It's a testosterone booster, improves blood lipids, bone health, clearing head lice, brain boosting, uh, Antifungal, reducing swollen prostate, fat soluble nutrient absorption, and sunscreen. Right? Put it on your skin for even sunscreen. Notice that the coconut plant is grown in a tropical area. You drink the coconut milk for hydration, and then you take the oil to place on your skin and you eat it. God had created the world perfectly. You need the fat, ingest the fat, and your skin will be healthier. Sea salt. People ask me this question, what's the difference between Himalayan salt and Celtic sea salt? So I use this slide, I put it up here. Celtic sea salt, this particular brand, and Selena Naturally, unrefined sea salts have higher levels of mineral-rich brine and trace elements than our, on the competitors. Regular table salt has only 1.68% uh, of the natural occurring elements. This is something we use on a regular basis, especially if we're seasoning our vegetables when we eat. I use it when I make eggs. I use it for our vegetables. I just sprinkle that on. And all you need is just a little bit of that because it has such a good flavor of it. Whereas the bleached table salt, you'll be doing this. And that stuff is no good for you. Here's the mineral analysis of the real salt on the left, the contents of the refined iodized salt on the right. The stuff on the left is what you want in your body, for, especially for hydration. Once it starts to get warmer out, you begin to sweat. You'll have more energy on this salt because real salt pumps your adrenals. It fuels your adrenals or your adrenaline. It'll give you energy. Just a, even a quarter teaspoon in the morning in water and you drink it, go to town, go to work. All right, Miss Angelina Jolie, we're getting ready to wrap up. Part of a clever corporate scheme to protect billions and BRAC gene patients influence Supreme Court decision. Nowhere in this article does ABC News mention ways to suppress BRCA1 gene by, for example, eating raw cruciferous vegetables containing indol 3 carbonyl, a potent anti-cancer nutrient that halts breast cancer in its tracks. Nowhere does ABC mention vitamin D, which prevents nearly four out of five cancers of all types, including breast cancer. You guys know why this is not mentioned in the news? Who supports the advertising dollars for the news. The pharmaceuticals, that's exactly right. Of course you're not going to hear about that. Our last story here, 21-year-old male diagnosed with Guillain-Barre syndrome, 
Again, that's similar to MS, or it's another word, you can say another word for MS. That's where a virus is attacking the spine. We saw a lot of these patients where they had, patient had numbness, pain in the feet, legs, fingertips are numb. Fatigue started after part of his finger was cut off and was sewn back on. He had a tetanus shot and possibly one more shot. Now next week when we meet together, we won't be doing this live, but we're going to go over some remedies that's an alternative to the tetanus shot if you ever get cut or if you ever step on a nail or whatever it may be. We're going to cover that next week as far as remedies that we'll be sharing with you. This patient here, they set him up for a tetanus shot and they, had, they gave him other shots and shortly after that he began to have those symptoms. Numbness, pain in the feet and the legs, fingertips are numb. He's only 21 years old and so they gave him a diagnosis. When you give a diagnosis, you're able to charge more for the visit and milk more money from the insurance. If I'm lying, please let me know. But you need a diagnosis. Symptoms were after these shots. And so we put him on some antiviral supplements, something to encourage his own immunity to fight off these viruses. And eventually, two weeks later, he says, I can feel my feet again. My numbness is 100% better. Uh, I'm sorry, 100% better some days, 50% better overall. He now has to fight this the rest of his life. You wonder what's going on with MS cases? People being relegated to wheelchairs? All these things, if it's not a mechanical issue, things attacking their spine. In essence, many times if it's not a mechanical issue, multiple sclerosis, virus attacking the spine. That should never have been there. If you want to say, that's what it is. A virus attacking your body. Some are successful. We used to see, we used to have great success with a lot of these patients supporting their own immunity. Others, we say, you, you know, unfortunately you're past the point of no return. We can't do anything for you. And so they would eventually get debilitated and unfortunately be wheelchair bound. It was unfortunate. Very unfortunate. Last slide here again for flu season. Get on a high quality C complex, vitamin C, uh, C complex or cataplex C. You need vitamin D. We're doing that more at our house since we replenished our stock. Uh, and also astragalus complex on a regular basis. For those that are watching, we're glad you could join us once again for health and healing. Again, I'm your presenter, Lou Alfala, and we hope to see you next time when we cover again and discover health and healing. Y'all have a good night. God bless.